selectively show you a young woman gunned down. Now the American people say, bomb Iran, kill them all. Blow up buildings full of women, just don't show them to us. It's very, very sick, selective propaganda, and it's all staged. And now I want to go ahead and start getting into North Korea situation, and then back to your phone calls and a ton of other news. So let's go ahead and get into Korea. Notice how all of a sudden Obama comes in, starts trying to pass his gun ban bills, secret list for Americans, all protests is terrorism. We'll be covering that coming up. The bankers are openly stealing $14.8 trillion here alone and growing and counting. In Europe, setting up a dictatorship of foreign offshore banks. All of this is happening. And meanwhile, suddenly, right when Kim Jong-il is sick and dying of cancer and says he may only have a few months left, his 20-something-year-old son's about to give him power, right when the regime is in flux, there's a power transfer. All the sanctions due to North Korea is make millions more of their own people die. That's propping up that regime by the outside oppression. Props up the inside oppression. The two tyrannies prop each other up. That's how this dark logic, this dark, this dark mathematics of the New World Order works. They brag about it. On top of that, the United States, ABB, Swiss company, Donald Rumsfeld, chairman of the board, in the 90s, on record, mainstream news, it's in my film, The Masters of Terror. We talk about why did they give nukes to... Pakistan and North Korea, because later they're going to start wars with them as a way to encircle Russia and China and start a war with them. And that's a film I made in 2002, and now it's happening. I mean, you know, these people are playing 10, 20, 30 year plans, and they write books about it, bragging. This is not my opinion. The National Security Advisor for um, Obama, as Baby Brzezinski's bragged in two books he's written on the subject, one on the grand chessboard. So here it is. North Korea threatens to harm U.S. if attacked. And they're saying they're going to start pulling over any North Korean ships coming out of the country, selling any components to any nation for food, for oil, for money. Eating oil, grain, things like that. And North Korea is saying that's an act of war. And if you do that, we're going to fire a nuke at South Korea, at Hawaii, or at Japan. And they got Taipong Dong 2 uh, missiles. Now, they, Kim Jong-il's dad, the first dictator... He died on July 4th. So they always test missiles on July 4th. Their media is saying they want to attack America on July 4th. That is not what these lunatics are doing. It's a cult all about the great leader, like he's a superhero, like they're now doing for Obama or Hitler, Saint Stalin, Iron Stalin, you know, Steel Stalin. That's what Stalin means is steel, the man of steel. So they love the same crud. So they take anything North Korea does and also exaggerate it. They go, we're going to fire a missile, test missile into the Pacific. Testing our range. And they say, oh, they're going to attack us on July 4th. So they also distort everything. But North Korea is officially coming out. I've even tuned into their English transmission on the Internet to check it for myself. And boy, let me tell you, listening to North Korean radio is not fun that they are threatening to nuke South Korea. They say, if you attack us, we'll attack you. And they're having all these drills the last few months in the build-up to this, massing troops on the North Korean border with South Korea and submarines and missile cruisers menacing North Korea. So they're trying to push the lunatics into firing and doing some provocation so we can be off to the races. As of a month ago, the armistice, the ceasefire... 50-plus years old, is over. The state of war is back. North Korea reminded the U.S. on Monday that it has nuclear weapons and warned it will strike back if attacked as a U.S. destroyer continued to trail a North Korean cargo ship suspected of carrying illicit weapons. After the U.S., that is, the people that run our country, 
The United States is a hooker being dragged by the hair by the pimp. So I don't want to say the United States. The people dragging us the hooker around by our hair. That's the New World Order. So the New World Order is menacing and manipulating and armed North Korea to begin with. So I'll come back, finish up with this, and then I'm going to give each story one minute. I'm going to blitz through news. I'm just going to make myself like, You guys time it. Make me stop each minute on each story. So I just want to elaborate, elaborate. Like earlier, how they announced Obama's volunteers, which will be forced volunteers, that's what it's called, will we'll be watching you on the surveillance cameras. That's their job is watching communities, and they're felons. The New York Times says that's good, though. You're not against giving a felon a job, a second chance. Everything we said came true. Everything we've done has been right. All right, finishing up with North Korea. The RAND Corporation, it's declassified. I've got it in my films. We've linked to it at Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. The Club of Rome, the United Nations, the Carnegie Endowment for Peace, which their official founding documents from 90-something years ago say we want to stage wars to bring in world government to stop wars. And then they, the Nazis wanted a European Union, and then... They merged with the U.S. and the British after the war in a deal to fight the Russians. And they and this is now mainstream European news. We reported this years ago in uh, my films like Martial Law and then Endgame. Martial Law five years ago. Hard to believe that's five years ago. seems like yesterday. But now it's mainstream news. We have the documents, but now it's mainstream news. Uh, just Google Nazis plan to EU. They would say it's to stop another war. We've got to have a tyranny. And so they bragged that they would get a League of Nations out of World War I. That didn't work good. So they had World War II for the U.N. The U.S. set that up at Presidio in San Francisco. So they're always criticizing the U.N. on our news, like the U.S. doesn't like it. The U.S. funds 60% of it, owns and runs the whole thing. When I say U.S., Anglo-American British Empire. So when I talk about Anglo-American British Empire, notice the Iranians are saying that. Notice the Russians are saying that. The Japanese are saying that. That's the terms worldwide. The terms I use here are used by anybody out there who's informed or in the diplomatic corps or historians or people that study geopolitical systems. This is all just 101, I'm saying. It's not some, gosh, that Alex is smart. I want to be clear. This is not rocket science. This is all public, but not popularly known. Just like it's absolute fact in any mainline textbook on precious stones or any textbook on industrial uh, minerals that diamonds are barely semi-precious. You've got the scale of super precious, precious, semi-precious down to stones that barely rate as semi-precious and then non-precious stones like non-polished granite or agate or something like that. They're barely even semi-precious. But no one knows that. I mean, it, it, because they're geographically limited to just a few places. One spot in Canada, Arkansas, notice those are environmental preserves. The government won't let you have it. It's, de, it's a, a De Beers Oppenheimer monopoly. Notice there are diamonds in Australia. Those are government preserves where only select corporations. And then in Africa. And then anybody that tries to dig a diamond without paying the globalist gets killed. And they make movies about blood diamonds acting like people trying to smuggle diamonds out of the bad guys. We gotta have a world government to stop them. See, I mean, that's how all this works. They'll show you slave camp movies with Leonardo DiCaprio and go, oh man, we gotta shut down these slave camps when it's the rich bankers running the slave camps publicly and killing anybody that, but see, I said I get into news in North Korea and I'm off in diamonds. The point is everything you've been taught is a lie. Everything that's reality is a publicly available. It's just not on the news generally. So, North Korea threatens to harm U.S. if attacked, and the United States says they're going to stop the ship any day now, and we'll see if North Korea fires a nuke. <laughs> and then you can say, well, they don't need to be shipping artillery to some terrorist group. But who gave them the nukes? Who gave Pakistan the nukes? It's like a month ago when they had the Pakistani president on TV. CIA already killed his wife who was the president, Budo, and our media thought we were so dumb, they said she hit her head on the car. Then it turned out there's video of them shooting her, boom, 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 from about 20 feet away. She flies up against the car with bullet holes in her. Our news goes, see, the young lady hit her head there. She slipped on a banana peel over there. They think we're so dumb. All over the world, it's admitted they machine gunned her and the U.S. did it. 
And then here they tell you she slipped on a banana peel. Because everybody knows the American people don't kill anybody. And then they've got the Taliban and Al-Qaeda attacking, 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 trying to overthrow the Pakistani government. And that's the excuse to send in U.S. troops so they can destabilize the nation further and break it in three to six parts. And they got the president on NBC going, why are you funding Al-Qaeda? And he laughs and says, what's wrong with you people? Everybody in the world knows you founded Al-Qaeda and Taliban. You have them attacking us to destabilize us. And the NBC CIA op just goes, because see, people just aren't playing along with the lies anymore. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And a lot of good old boys were like, yeah, the CIA's got to stage the terror attacks to keep the American way going. I've had a few of them, you know, come to get in my face and do that. You know what happens if we don't stage 9-11, Alex? Then the Arabs take over the planet. 